On January 2, 1936, Roger Miller was born in Fort Worth, Texas, the third son of Gene and Laudine Holt. Gene Miller died from spinal meningitis when Miller was just a year old. Unable to support the family during the Great Depression, Laudine was forced to send her three sons to live with three of Gene's brothers. Thus, Roger Miller grew up on a farm outside Eric, Oklahoma, with Elmer and Armella Miller. As a boy, Miller did farm work such as picking cotton and plowing. He later said he was dirt poor, and that as late as 1951, the family did own a telephone. He received his primary education at a one-room schoolhouse. Miller was an introverted child and often daydreamed or composed songs. One of his earliest compositions went, There's a picture on the wall. It's the dearest of them all. Mother. Miller was a member of FFA in high school. He listened to the Grand Old Opry and Light Crust Doughboys on a Fort Worth station with his cousin's husband, Jeb Woolley. Woolley taught Miller his first guitar chords and bought him a fiddle. Woolley, Hank Williams, and Bob Wills were the influences that led to Miller's desire to be a singer-songwriter. He began to run away and perform in Oklahoma and Texas. At 17, he stole a guitar out of desperation to write songs. However, he turned himself in the next day. He chose to enlist in the United States Army to avoid jail. He later quibbed, My education was Korea, Clash of 52. Near the end of his military service while stationed in Atlanta, Georgia, Miller played fiddle in the Circle A Wranglers, a military musical group started by Farron Young. While Miller was stationed in South Carolina, an Army sergeant whose brother was Kenneth C. Jethro Burns, from the musical duo Homer and Jethro, persuaded him to head to Nashville after his discharge. On leaving the Army, Miller traveled to Nashville to begin his musical career. He met with Chad Atkins, who asked to hear him sing, loaning him a guitar since Miller didn't own one. Out of nervousness, Miller played the guitar and sang a song in two different keys. Atkins advised him to come back later, when he had more experience. Miller found work as a bellhop at Nashville's Andrew Jackson Hotel, and he was soon known as a singing bellhop. He was finally hired by Minnie Pearl to play the fiddle in her band. He then met George Jones, who introduced him to music executives from the Star Day record label, who scheduled an audition. Impressed, the executives set up a recording session with Jones in Houston. Jones and Miller collaborated to write Tall Tall Trees and Happy Child. The human mind is a wonderful thing. It starts working when you're born and it doesn't stop again until you sit down to write a song, Roger Miller said. After marrying and becoming a father, Miller put aside his music career to be a fireman in Amarillo, Texas. A fireman by day, he performed at night. Miller said that as a fireman, he saw only two fires, one in a chicken coop, and another he slept through, after which the department suggested that, uh, maybe he would like to seek other employment. Miller met Ray Price and became a member of his Cherokee Cowboys. He returned to Nashville and wrote Invitation to the Blues, which was covered by Rex Allen and later by Ray Price, whose recording was a number three hit on the country charts. Miller then signed with Tree Publishing on a salary of $50 a week. He wrote Half a Mind for Ernest Tubb, That's the Way I Feel for Fair and Young, and his first number one, Billy Bayou, which, along with Home, was recorded by Jim Reeves. 
Miller became one of the biggest songwriters of the 1950s. Bill Anderson later remarked that Rogers was the most talented and least disciplined person that you could imagine. Citing the attempts of Miller's tree publishing boss, Buddy Killen, to force him to finish a piece. He was known to give away lines, inciting many Nashville songwriters to follow him around since, according to Killen, everything he said was a potential song. Miller signed a recording deal with Decca Records in 1958. He was paired with singer Donnie Lytle, who later gained fame under the name Johnny Paycheck, to perform the Miller-written A Man Like Me, and later The Wrong Kind of Girl. Neither of these honky-tonk-styled songs charted. His second single with the label featured the B-side, Jason Fleming, foreshadowed Miller's future style. To make money, Miller went on tour with Farron Young's band as a drummer, although he had never drummed before. During this period, he signed a record deal with Chet Atkins at RCA Victor, for whom Miller recorded You Don't Want My Love, also known as In the Summertime in 1960, which marked his first appearance on country charts, peaking at number 14. The next year, he made an even bigger impact, breaking through the top 10 with his single When Two Worlds Collide, co-written with Bill Anderson. But Miller soon tired of writing songs. He divorced his wife and began a party lifestyle that earned him the moniker Wild Child. He was dropped from his record label and began to pursue other interests. After numerous appearances on late night comedy shows, Miller decided that he might have a chance in Hollywood as an actor. Short of money, he signed with the up and coming label Smash Records. He asked the label for $1,600 in cash in exchange for recording 16 sides. Smash agreed to the proposal and Miller performed his first session for the company early in 1964, when he recorded the hit songs Dang Me and chug lug Both were released as singles, peaking at number one and number three, respectively, on country charts. Both fared well on the Billboard Hot 100, reaching number seven and number nine. The songs transformed Miller's career although the former was penned by Miller in just four minutes. Later that year, he recorded the number 15 hit, Do Wackadoo, and soon after the biggest hit of his career, King of the Road, which topped country and adult contemporary charts while peaking at number four on the Billboard 100. It also reached number one in the UK singles chart for one week in May of 1965. The song was inspired by a sign in Chicago that read Trailers for Sale or Rent and a hobo who happened upon Miller at an airport in Boise. But Miller needed months to write the song, which was certified gold in May of 1965 after selling a million copies. It won numerous awards and earned a royalty check of $160,000 that summer. Later in the year, Miller scored hits with Engine Engine No. 9 and Kansas City Star, a top 10 country hit in 1965 about a local television children's show personality who would rather stay in the safety and security of his success in Kansas City than become a bigger star or risk failure in Omaha. And England Swings, an adult contemporary number no. 1. He began 1966 with the hit Husband and Wives, a mid-tempo waltz reflecting on issues that affect marriage. Miller was given his own TV show on NBC in September of 1966. It lasted for 13 weeks, and it ended its run in January of 1967. During this period, Miller recorded songs written by other songwriters. The final hit of his own composition was Walking in the Sunshine, which reached number seven and number six 
on the country and adult contemporary charts in 1967. Later in the year, he scored his final top 10 hit with the low-key cover of Bobby Russell's Little Green Apples. The next year, he was the first to cover Chris Christopherson's Me and Bobby McGee, taking the song to number 12 on country charts. In 1970, Miller recorded the album A Trip in the Country, honky-tonk-styled standards penned by Miller, including Tall Tall Trees. Later that year, after Smash Records folded, Miller was signed by Columbia Records, for whom he released Dear Folks, Sorry I Haven't Written Lately, in 1973. Later that year, Miller wrote and performed three songs in the Walt Disney animated feature Robin Hood, as the rooster and minstrel Alan A. Dale, including Whistle Stop, which was sampled for use in the popular Hamster Dance website. The other songs are Ooh De Lely and Not in Nottingham. He provided the voice of Spiltoe, the equine narrator of Rankin Bass holiday special Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey in 1977. Miller collaborated with Willie Nelson on an album titled Old Friends. The title track was based on a song he had previously penned for his family in Oklahoma. The song, with guest vocals from Ray Price, was the last hit of Miller's career, peaking at number 19 on country charts in 1982. He continued to record for different labels and charted a few songs, but stopped writing in 1978, feeling that his more artistic works were not appreciated. He was absent from the entertainment business following the release of Old Friends in 1981, but returned after receiving an offer to write a Broadway score for a musical based on Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Although he had not read the novel, Miller accepted the offer after discovering how the story brought him back to his childhood in Royal Oklahoma. It took a year and a half to write the opening, but he eventually finished it. The work, titled Big River, premiered at the Eugene O'Neill Theater in New York on April 25, 1985. The musical received glowing reviews, earning seven Tony Awards, including Best Score for Miller. He acted the part of Huck Finn's father, Pap, for three months after the exit of actor John Goodman, who left for Hollywood. In 1983, Miller played a dramatic role on an episode of Quincy M.E. He played a country and western singer who is severely burned while freebasing cocaine. Miller left for Santa Fe to live with his family following the success of Big River. He co-wrote Dwight Yoakam's hit, It Only Hurts When I Cry, from his 1990 album If There Was a Way, and supplied background vocals. The song was released as a single in 1991, peaking at number seven on country charts. He began a solo guitar tour in 1990, ending the following year after being diagnosed with lung cancer. His last performance on television occurred on a special tribute to Minnie Pearl, which aired on TNN on October 26, 1992, the day after Miller's death. On June 25, 2019, the New York Times Magazine listed Roger Miller among hundreds of artists whose master material was reportedly destroyed in 2008 Universal Fire. Miller was married three times and fathered eight children. Miller married Barbara Crow from Shamrock, Texas when she was 17. Together the couple had four children the first of whom died shortly after birth. As Miller's young family grew, his desire for fame and success continued to grow as well. After moving the family to California for a short time, Miller and Barbara divorced. Subsequent public interest in Miller led to the success he had long hoped for. 
but brought with it struggles for the performer that are often associated with life in the entertainment business. Periods of burnout as well as alcohol and substance abuse. His amphetamine use in the 1960s has been described as both damaging of his career and helpful to his songwriting. In 1972, he referred to amphetamines as a snake pit I got into and supported a ban on the drug in Oklahoma. Miller married Lee Kendrick of San Antonio in 1964. Together, the couple had two children, including Roger Dean Miller Jr. The senior Miller wrote the Christmas song, Old Toy Trains, for his son, who was two years old when it was released in 1967. After 14 years of marriage, Leah and Miller divorced in the mid-70s. Miller eventually married Mary Arnold, whom he met through Kenny Rogers. Arnold was a replacement member in the first edition, a band that included Rogers. After the breakup of the first edition, she performed with her husband Miller on tours as a backup singer, including a performance at the White House for then-President Gerald Ford. In 2009, she was inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She currently manages Roger Miller's estate. She sued Sony for copyright infringement in the 2007 case Roger Miller Music Incorporated versus Sony ATV Publishing LLC, which went to the United States Court of Appeals for the 6th District. Arnold was ultimately awarded nearly $1 million in royalties and rights to the songs Miller wrote in 1964. Miller was a lifelong cigarette smoker. During a television interview, Miller explained that he composed his songs from bits and pieces of ideas he wrote on scraps of paper. When asked what he did with the unused bits and pieces, he half-joked, I smoked them. He also wrote a song about his habit titled Dad Blame Anything a Man Can't Quit. Miller died of lung and throat cancer on October 25, 1992. At age 56, shortly after the discovery of a malignant tumor under his vocal cords. In 1995, Roger Miller was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Roger Miller was asked one time, how he would like to be remembered. He simply stated, I just want to be remembered. Well, here at Spotlight TV, Roger Miller, we remember you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Sure would help us out a lot with YouTube.